All right. Final week, week eight. Um, we've gone through every kind of step for elk hunting from picking a state to a tag to a season, uh, to a season to a tag, to scouting, to calling, to late season, to meat care. Um, now, you know, say say somebody that's listening has uh, like a full season of elk hunting under their belt. Uh, maybe they're successful. I'd say like probably not. You know, what, maybe what, what, after your first season, what, like, what did you learn? What do you change? What do you reflect on after, after something like that? Regardless of the season that you took, if it's over the counter, limited entry, a turn back tag on a second list, now you actually have boots on the ground experience elk hunting, which is more valuable than anything that you or I can say on a microphone that that's what you need. And that's something that you need to compound on year after year. So now, You've done one. You figured out the area a little bit that you've hunted. Start planning on things that you want to do differently, whether that's like a tactic that you tried that didn't work out or an area that you tried that was overcrowded and you want to do something different. Start planning just like a retirement. This is a portfolio. This isn't just something that you can do in and out without any effort or any thought built into it. So start thinking about goals that you have for what you want to be different and what you want to grow on. So that can be points. That can be um, getting a new skill set that could be changing some gear out that could mean a lot of different things. So this episode is more just about like reflecting about the first hunt that you had. So going back to mine, the very first hunt that I ever did was in Southwest Colorado. I knew nothing about elk hunting other than I watched every single Fremos elk hunting video, <laughs> like at all, every YouTube video. And I had like this preconceived idea that I'm owed an elk because I know this stuff. Yeah. I bought this gear. And these things are just going to come in screaming. I'm not shooting a five point on the first five days in the season. It was my thought. Like, I'm looking for this big bull. And quickly realized how silly that was. So before we get into the planning, if you have the ability to shoot a cow on your tag and it's your first time, kill it. Half the experience is learning how to cut one up and manage that meat, pack it out. Like, that is a euphoric experience having a, any elk on your back. My first elk was a cow. And it didn't matter if it was a cow or a 380 pole at that moment because it was just so awesome that I went out and did what I tried to do. So build upon that, recognize the things that you did wrong, fix those, and start building kind of a roadmap to what you want to do in the future. So points is a big thing. Either go to like a WTA and get the tags program with them, have some help with that. That's probably the most efficient way to do it. We use Onyx for better mapping. It's pay to play, but you're better off for it. You have a range finder in your pocket, so you don't have to guess with that. This is no different. It's another kind of avenue. It's a tool to use that makes your hunts better, faster than what you could on your yeah. own. That's probably one mistake that I've made over the years is trying to figure this stuff out on my own because it changes so quick. Um, and then just look at some other avenues that you can get better in the whole woodsmanship category. So spring bear. Mm-hmm. It's an extra seven, 10 days in a year where you can be out in the mountains, go to a backpacking trip in June, whatever. Just spend more time learning how to move and traverse through that type of environment because it's foreign to guys that are, are from our area. Yeah. A quick shout out to another amazing sponsor of ours, Kafaru International. If you're like us and love hunting in some of the toughest places, you know how crucial having the right gear is. Kafaru makes some of the toughest, most reliable backpacks and tents out there, and it's all made right here in America. Whether you're hunting in the backcountry or headed to your favorite deer stand, Kafaru has you covered. Keep your eyes out this year, especially as they're launching a ton of amazing new products like the new Arc frame that just came out. So next time you gear up for an adventure, make sure to check out Kafaru International. Yeah, I love that. Um, What I've seen guys have trouble with and this applies to any type of hunting deer hunting elk hunting whatever is that you get locked in on the success of one season and so you look at your whole elk success as could i get it done in five days or seven days or whatever you're doing um personally what i've seen for for any type of hunting is if i'm able to zoom out and see hunting as like a multi-season endeavor that I'm, I'm learning as I go and I'm, I'm dialing in and so on. It makes 
like the failure to shoot something more palatable because you're learning the whole time and you're seeing this as a whole process rather than like, I have to get it done now. Otherwise it's just a, a total loss. I kind of view it like stepping stones. Like I do with not just elk, but like any species, the first caribou hunt that I ever did for me to feel successful with that. I needed to be there. Like just that travel to get there. Yeah. felt like a stepping stone of success. Then to kill any caribou whatsoever, a stepping stone of success. Elk hunting, I think the first stepping stone that people specifically from our area, from areas that aren't mountainous, that don't have elk, or that don't have a humble population of elk, that first stepping stone of success is just deciding to go. Yep. And that's the biggest hang up for people. And then once they do it, and there's this stigma around elk that it's like this impossible to obtain species, and it just flat isn't. They aren't that hard. They're physically demanding, they take planning, but they just flat aren't that hard. So take that first step and then build your stepping stones kind of past that. Now I've got a garage full of five points. One of these days, maybe I'm going to start passing those bulls up. I don't feel like I, that's I any feel like it won't be right. Yeah. But for people that are kind of building their hunting portfolio, those are the next steps to kind of look at. So applying for limited entry, getting in with WTA on tags, doing some off-season scouting, making it more of like not just a hunting season thing and more of a year round thing. Yep. That's going to make you more like they talk about 10% of elk hunters are successful. I think that's a load of crap. Just like there's, there's 10% of elk hunters that never leave the parking lot or they go hunt for half a day. Then they drink course light back at campers. Right. Like all these percentages mean nothing. So if, if that's true, then 10% of the elk hunters are killing 90% of the elk, I think is also probably true. Right. So do the things that make you the other side of that 10%. Yeah, I love that. It, 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 all it is is looking at it as like treat every time you're out to learn as a, like a learning experience. Mm -hmm. The more you're building it up, the more you're learning about how elk interact with different things and how they react to pressure or changes of weather or whatever in it. Like even if you don't shoot an elk, like it's much more fulfilling because it's like at least you're adding to your bank of knowledge. You're becoming this woodsman, like you said. You're you're building new skill, and there is like a climatic, like heroic feeling of elk hunting. You're out in a beautiful place. It's yeah. not like you're going to a gas station getting a freaking breakfast burrito and going and sitting in a tree stand for a few right. hours it's just a very different not that there's anything wrong with that if there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> and then packed a few burritos in myself but yeah it it is a more primal kind of like true to hunting feel that i feel like people should experience and once you've done that first year everything else seems so much more obtainable like once i started getting into the western stuff alaska doesn't seem like that so far of a reach anymore and you realize none of it really is it's all the same principles right that you just get everything from travel to meat care to hunting it's all the same ideas it's just applied in like in different areas right right and so like even talking about gear or whatever it's just like a lot of what we're talking about actually applies to whatever you're hunting almost all of it yeah so it becomes it comes down to like woodsmanship and flexibility and like just being able to adapt mm-hmm Mental focus is a big one and just kind of deciding like this is what I'm going to give to it and nothing less. OnX is the title sponsor of our podcast here at the Fair Chase and it's a must-have app for all of us who love to explore the outdoors. Whether you're hunting or hiking or fly fishing, OnX gives you detailed, accurate maps right at your fingertips. With property boundaries, topographical features, and trail data, You'll always know where you are and where you're headed. You'll also likely be able to figure out where that big buck is headed to. Plus, their offline maps mean you're covered even in the most remote locations. OnX is the ultimate tool for outdoor navigation, making every adventure safer and more enjoyable. Download OnX today and explore with confidence. What do you do when you're out and you're like day three or four? Because I think a lot of guys, day three or four, and it's slow, they... That's when I think a majority of people kind of mentally check out. Sometimes they'll go back to town or whatever. Like what you, when you're at that point, I know what I would say, but I, I don't know what you're, what, what, do you, what do you do with that? You have to know yourself a little bit at that point. If you need a burger day, go have a burger day. Yeah. Like if you need a reset, it's the guys that, and I've talked to far too many of them, 
not just elk hunting, but Alaska too, where like, I'll get a text message from them and I know they shouldn't have service and they, they've came down and they've quit on day four of 10. Yep. So if there's something you can do to keep yourself from doing that, and if that's taking a little breather and running into town and grabbing a burger and a beer, kind of resetting, drying your clothes, I don't know, do it, but get back to it because otherwise you come home and you look at it and you have regret. You know, like I spent three days dicking around in town. All this time and money and yep. I didn't even hunt that hard. It's way easier to leave it all on the table and be like, oh, I didn't come home with a bull, but holy shit, did I try. Yeah. So well, what I've always liked about you and why we get along is generally day three or four, we're still so excited by the fact that we're out hunting yep. that that generally carries us through throughout the entire time. Day three or four is like when I came off of my excitement hangover Yeah, and I can actually think straight. So <laughs> that's probably the days that I'm actually hunting. Yeah. So, well, cause yeah. it's, it's nights of this just laying in bed with a smile on your face waiting for it to be light again to go hunting it right that's how usually i spend the first half of any hunt i'm on yep the sleeping is the hardest part for me same especially with elk because they're bugling and screaming around you there's just so much that once you get to that point where like you have enough confidence that i know what i need to do to make this happen you are so dialed into your game at that point you're like almost to a fault yeah you get this tunnel vision feeling about you where the rest of the world is kind of gone. Yep. You've got one thing on your mind. But for that seven-day period, it has to. Like, there's guys that can't turn it off. There's guys that can't step away from the other part of life, and I get that, too. Like, I do a lot of remote work and stuff from the mountains sometimes, yeah. but you have to be able to turn that shit off. Yeah. And that's the only way that I found any sort of measurable, repeatable success. Yeah, it's a it's a balance, and it's... That's what makes it so fun. Like when you're when you're away hunting, you're like you're so immersed that yep. you're able to kind of put everything out. Things seem to be very simple and very focused yep. because you got one thing to focus on. Right. This episode is also brought to you by Two O Gear, innovators in technical hunting clothing. Two O is a newer company. It's based right here in Michigan. And whether you're hunting elk in the mountains or chasing antelope in the plains or traipsing through swamps after that ruddy buck, Two O has you covered with premium jackets and pants, merino wool layers, everything you could possibly need to stay comfortable in the woods. Their products are engineered for functionality and durability, ensuring you stay protected in any conditions. Plus, their camo is really effective. We were big fans. So. Don't take our word for it, though. Go to 2ogear.com and check it out. All right, well, 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 let's end the series. Now, this has been eight weeks of a, a lot of elk stuff. Um, first of all, I want to make sure anybody that listens to this knows any questions you have, we're happy to answer. We're happy to spend time with. We get them all the time. We personally answer every one. Um, but maybe for, for people, like, you know, who are looking to get in, into elk hunting and do all this stuff, what kind of, like, Last bit of advice this is your last shot before we move on. What would you tell? Throw um, caution in the wind and just do it. Just do it. Yep. Yeah. Just that's every, t I don't know how many countless people have come over to learn how to bugle or have asked, like, can you look at a map of me and try to figure this out? And it might be areas that I have no idea about, but they've all gone and experienced it. And I don't know, I can't think of one of them that has not gone the next year. They might not have killed. They might have been like terrible trip. We got rained on the whole time. We yeah. hunters all around us. We saw two up, but we're going again next year because we figured this part of it out, or we got this dialed in, or maybe they did kill an elk their first year and they were they were lucky. So just go. That's the biggest thing. There's nothing that we can say that would substitute for that. No, and you can't. You can't. You can talk all you want. And there's tons of our podcasts and other podcasts and videos and articles and everything about how to elk hunt. But, you know, until you're out there, it's just, there's, there's not, there's like book knowledge and like experiential knowledge and like, you can read something, but you don't really know it until you live it. Yeah. You know, and I think that's especially true for any hunting, but especially for elk. The biggest thing I guess that I would, to pull any hesitations away, I would rather elk hunt a new state than whitetail hunt a new state. I think it's easier to walk into a brand new state and find elk than it is to find a big white. Really, you think it's harder to kill a to, to find to find and kill a big mature white tail, or to go out and do your first elk hunt? I think elk are way easier to figure out than an old deer. If you just follow these eight weeks that we've laid out, yeah, and just, easy, and just go, yeah, just go figure it out I like that. All right, well, let's um, we'll call it a series. Uh, we've got other stuff coming, obviously, but um. 
appreciate you taking the time and, and sharing your hard earned knowledge for yep. the people. Uh, emphasis on hard. Yes. All right. Anything, any last words? That is it. All right. Well, everybody, um, check out our next series. We've got more coming and, and appreciate you, uh, taking time to uh, listen to us talk about elk hunting. Thanks.